Okay, welcome to uh, Let's Talk About God, um, where I'm joined today by our co-host, uh, James and Hyper. Welcome, James and Hyper. Why are you, my brother? Hi, Sean. Hello, good to have you guys again uh, and be working with you uh, this lovely afternoon. And we also have to extend a nice, warm welcome to Anthony. Anthony, welcome to you. Hi, guys. How are you? Hello. And also, it's good to have uh, Rod back, man. We missed you for the last couple of weeks, so... A warm welcome to you too, Rod. Thank welcome you. Back. Good to be back. Yes, yeah, awesome. We got um, we got a little bit of a um, what can I say? Just a little bit of change in our plans for this particular talk. So I'll just go through and uh, and uh, share how we'll we'll be going through with this talk today, uh, which will be uh, titled uh, Testimonies. So um, first of all, as I've already done, I'd like to invite you guys to let's talk about God. And for this week's talk, uh, we will be inviting all our um, co-hosts and even viewers to join in the open forum. Well, we will be today sharing our experiences and our testimonies about our personal relationship with God, um, how we've come to know God and, and trust and love God. And um, I think it's important uh, to share. And uh, by all means, we look forward to hearing about your growth and your challenges and why you love this amazing indescribable God that we serve. Um, just for everyone who may be listening and wondering how long we'll be doing this, I'll just say we will resume our normal format of discussing a monthly topic broken into uh, weekly talks with Bible verses, which include uh, question and answer. We'll, we'll get back to that format next week. But this week we'll be learning about uh, your personal journey with our Heavenly Father. Uh, keep in mind uh, that other guests may, may want to share their story as well. So please keep your testimony to the short version, please, uh, about your journey uh, with this amazing God. Um, keep in, uh, keep on the, in, in, the, in the background that we will still try to stick to our 60 minutes, which we probably only done once or twice since we started this, but we will try to stick to that at least as a guideline, if nothing else. So um, I hope everyone will enjoy this opportunity to, to share with, uh, with one another about your journey. So um, the other thing I want to say is that next month, our topic will be um, the promises of God. So next month, we will uh, have four talks talking about uh, particular points in the uh, or, 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 or times in the Bible where God has made some promises um, to us as his children. And uh, we'll talk about what that means uh, to us personally as well, too. Um, we will send out in next week's email the first topic for next week. And um, that will uh, come out probably on Tuesday or so. Um, with that being said, uh, now I'd like to invite anyone, if they don't mind, to have a short prayer for us as we start uh, today's talk. Oh, dear Lord, we are so thankful um, that we are blessed by your presence, dear Lord. Through your Holy Spirit, we are so thankful that we are friends that speaks about you, dear Lord, and that you reveal yourself in each person's life so much differently. Mm. Father, we thank you for the respect you've always shown when you were on this earth as Jesus Christ, that you are God who wants to respect people. And I, I, I really appreciate it. And you've always been a respecter of people. And I, I, I can see that in my life. And I will share that with my testimony, dear Lord. But I pray that each person here today may share their love and the love that they have for you, dear Lord, and that they may be blessed by other people's testimony. And may this be something we can learn from and something we can grow from, dear Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 So thank you for that prayer, um, Hyper. So with that being said, I just want to, as we normally do, we kind of set the scene. What we, what we wanted to do is we just kind of wanted to take a step back and instead of um, continuing with the <laughs> Bible uh, topic for the week and then the question and answers, we just wanted to give everyone a chance to share um, how they've come to be where they are in their journey uh, with God. And we think that that is very important and also encouraging. And for that, I want to share the Bible verse found in Proverbs uh, 27 and 17. I'm reading the New Living uh, Bible, and it says, a friendly discussion is, a stimula is as stimulating as the sparks that fly when iron strikes iron. And 
to put that in layman terms, the more that we can um, share our stories and our journey with each other, the more we will um, become and learn from each other about God and how amazing God is and how he's working in each one of our lives as Hyper said in his prayer individually, but also uh, collectively and bringing us to a closer harmony and uh, relationship with himself. So I thought that those, that was very <coughs> important to share. Now, with that being said, um, we would like to open up the, uh, the talk for anyone who would like to start us off. I was brave enough to start us off and just share a little bit about uh, their, um, their journey with God. Okay, yeah. Uh, good morning, guys. Um, well, it's not actually morning, it's afternoon, isn't it? Yeah. 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 <laughs> Scold them yeah. by you, that's why. <laughs> <laughs> um, look, uh, I'm going to set my timer here so I can look at the timer when I'm talking. Okay, so I was born in 1984. Um, yeah, that's a long time ago. I was, I was born in 1984 on a farm in Zimbabwe. Uh, so that was Zimbabwe had just come from a, a war at that time. Oh. Um, yeah. So I was born to two parents who had been uh, involved in the war. Okay. So they bought a farm and it was a farm of um, a group of people who were who had been soldiers during the war. Uh, <clears throat> so at that place, there really was no, there was no respect for, in my opinion, there was no respect for 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 God per se. They were more trying to just live on a communal basis and you know and try to treat each other um, equally. Well it didn't uh, work out the way that they wanted it to work. So and at the end of the day my uh, my mom sent us kids to a Christian school. So I'm I'm the last of three children. Um, my mom sent us to a Christian school when I went to that Christian school, that's when I can say I had had some episodes of, you know, going to church and such things before, but because I went to a Christian boarding school, now religion was every day, you know. So the I think the verse that really summarizes my thoughts at that time is, uh, I think it's, um, let me have a look here. It's Revelation chapter 22. It should be chapter 22. You can I find chapter 22? Chapter 22, verse... Um, is it... Uh, uh, so I think it should be verse 12 or something like that, which says, uh, Behold, I am coming soon, and my reward is with me. Mm. Yeah. So to me, um, that, that, that passage... So anyway, so here it is. Um, chapter 22, verse 12. And behold, I am coming soon. I'm coming quickly. And my reward is with me to give to every man according to his work. I'm the Alpha and the Omega, the first and the last. So that was the impression I had when I was at the high school that Jesus was coming soon. And, uh, you know, they used different prophecies to show that Jesus was coming soon. And I believed it. And I just wanted to get that reward. Isaiah, first quarter. 2021. I don't know whose voice is that. Before Daniel leaves out, Jennifer. Who's 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 speaking there in the background? Dear Heavenly Father, we're so. Oh, sorry, sorry. All right, go ahead. I think some Hyper was having a few challenges. Okay, all right. Yeah, so I I believe that you know I'm, I'm I need to go to heaven. That was my uh, that was the thing I wanted. I wanted to go to heaven. Mm. So I became a Christian for those purposes. Um, and it was really just about learning all these different rules so that, you know, when Jesus comes, you can go to heaven. And then eventually I, uh, people told me, you don't have to worry about what you do, so to speak. Um, you just have to have faith in God and God will treat you as if you'd never sinned. And that seemed to be working out for a while. But my life wasn't very, I, would, I can say maybe my life wasn't very happy or stable as a Christian. And then um, I, I changed schools to another Christian school again. And this is where I learned this verse, uh, which is uh, in Jeremiah chapter nine, verse 22, sorry, verse, uh, verse 23. 
Thus says the Lord, let not the wise man glory in his wisdom. Let not the mighty man glory in his might. Let not the rich man glory in his riches. But let him who glories glory in this, that he understands and knows me, that I am, I am the Lord, exercising loving kindness and judgment and righteousness in the earth. For in these things I delight, says the Lord. So this sort of made my faith a bit more stable because now my faith was no longer about going to heaven. It was now about, you know, uh, the yes. character of God and knowing who God is. Amen. Um, however, I, I didn't find much support in that belief. Um, I was nearly alone, I think, in believing that until, um, until I came to Brisbane. And that's where I met Hyper in um, Hyper assisted me to shift my focus a bit. And, um, and this is where I discovered this uh, verse in uh, 1 Timothy chapter 1, verse 5. Now the purpose of the commandment is love. Pure is, is love from a pure heart and a good conscience and from a sincere faith. Um, uh, from which some have strayed, having turned, um, having turned aside to idle talk. So this really started to make my, uh, my faith in God clearer because I've, I, I started to really realize <clears throat> what does it mean? What's the Bible for? Why, what's God all about? And when I realized um, it's about understanding who the character of God is, and it's, it's about realizing that all his commandments are to, to produce love in us, pure love from a sincere faith. Um, that really changed everything for me. And uh, I can say maybe it clarified my understanding of what it means when you say some people will go to hell and all these things. All those things became so clear to me that uh, for the first time in my life, I was no longer ashamed to discuss why I was a Christian. I was actually longing for any questions from anyone um, to clarify what my belief is around God. And um, from, I think that was 2013, from that time to this day, I really do, I can say I really do enjoy spending time praying, talking to God, studying, Whereas before it was something that I knew as a good Christian, you're supposed to do. If you're a real Christian, you should be doing witnessing, you know, that sort of thing um, where you end up doing something because they said, if you were, if you're a Christian, you should be doing that. But now it, it was just simply, I was doing what I love because I loved it. And it's something that I do because I love it. I study not because I'm supposed to do it as a Christian, but because I actually do like it. Yeah. So, uh, so for me, I can say, uh, just discovering who God is changed my motivation for life. The reason why I get up and the way I look at people, the way I look at my problems. I've been through a lot of problems in my life, but I've never been happier. I used to make more money before I discovered this view of God. <laughs> but, um, and I had more problems after I discovered this right in my life. But if I was to make a choice, do you want to go back to that comfort or do you want to go through all the things you went through as you were discovering the character of God? I would choose the second without, Amen. without even uh, worrying about Amen. it. Like it's the best thing in my, in my life. Amen, where, Anthony. Yeah. The way I think about my wife, my baby, everything is just so different now. It's like the li life is different. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. So I think I, I, I think I've said everything I want to say. Um, I, I do, so I'll stop here and then, um, so I've done eight minutes. So if there's someone who wants me to clarify something, I can do that um, in about two minutes. So unless, unless if everyone is happy, then that's that from me. Yeah, Anthony, um, you, when I always speak to you, you know, as a friend, we are good friends. You always speak about your life before, like you explained it again about being on a farm and living in this communist way where everybody shared everything. Um, it wasn't 100% communists now. Oh, not okay, not 100%, yeah. but I, I just mean that, that communal thing. Yeah. Uh, through your background and through what you've learned through God and as a child, have you, have you seen God much greater in your life? I, you've shared it, that how it was before as a young person, but I mean when you were a kid, right up to now, as, as, as things become clear of 
God's way of doing things, how God deals with life, how God dealt with you in ways like him. Okay, um, I think the, 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 uh, the best, I'll just set this to two minutes. Okay. So the best thing for me is that I've, that I've discovered uh, when it comes to dealing with life is the freedom that God gives people. Mm. That was, yeah. for me, that was, it was such a big impact. I just, it's because I had eight minutes, that's why I skipped it. But the, the freedom that God gives people to, to believe what they want to believe is, is so huge. Yeah. When you take that into account with the way you raise your own children, when you take that into account with the way you deal with your spouse, the way you deal with your friends, the way you deal with people at church, when you finally decide, it's not up to me what other people believe. It's their choice. Mm. And I don't have, people don't have to believe anything I say. You know, I just give them evidence and they make their choice. Yeah. And for me, that's been like the biggest, uh, the biggest thing in my life to, to just sort of learn how to treat people with that much respect. And like it even made my work because I'm, I'm a carer. I was a carer, a disability support worker. Before, like sometimes I'd come to work, you know, really wanting to help out the resident and all these things. But sometimes I'll be coming to work, you know, with my own problems from home. And not that I would treat the client badly, but I wouldn't be going out of my way. And if they insulted me or something, I would be maybe taking it more personally. Mm. But when, 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 when I encountered the way God treated me mm. and what his words mean, it just changed the way I approached my work. It changed the way I approach my life, my marriage, my baby. Everything is just all about, you know, you love people, you tell the truth, and you, sh you give them the freedom to do what they want to. And you make sure that you maintain your freedom as well. So it's just amazing. It's, a, it's the most freeing way to live. Mm. And uh, wow. so that's two minutes there, Hyper. Thank you. Amen. Amen. That was pretty powerful, Anthony. I really mm. like how you concluded on how... God gives us the liberty, the freedom to choose. And as you said, we have this information called the Bible and it's up to us to do what, it, what we want and God doesn't force anything on us. So that's pretty, pretty powerful. Thank you. Thank you for um, sharing that with us. Yeah. You're welcome. And thank you for the opportunity. Mm -hmm. You're welcome. Okay, let me go after Anthony because he mentioned my name in his testimony. <laughs> I want to mention him in my testimony. <laughs> testimony. He said that I shifted him. Um, well, I think he shifted me too. And, and I think we as Christians and as brothers, we shift each other. Um, mm -hmm. We shared a few things with each other and we were both blessed. I was really blessed. I want to thank you, Anthony, um, that you weren't afraid to share what you know. Um, that you did shade with me as well. Um, but let's start, let me start from the beginning. Must I start from the beginning? I, I, some of the things I wrote down, some didn't. This did, I didn't write down. I saw Anthony starting from it. Then he made me think about my life as well. So, but, um, you know, I was born a Adventist or Christian, if I may say it that way. Um, I was born a Christian. I always believed in God. But I believe what my parents believe. I believe what my grandmother, because she was the monarch of the home. She was the first Adventist or the first Christian. And, I, and my dad was. But a lot with my father as well. My father was very kind. And um, when I became, when I got baptized, um, I, I thought I needed to be perfect. I really <laughs> thought so. And I used to tell my dad, dad, you must be perfect. You mustn't do this. You mustn't do that. And my dad would smile at me and he would say, Hyper, I don't think God wants that. But he never forced that on me even. He never told me, Hyper, you, this is what you need to believe. This. He always said, the way you, you, you sound, it sounds like you, you, you're telling me I need to do that. And um, I, I said, yeah, but you need to, Daddy. That's the right thing to do. <laughs> you know. And my dad would just laugh. And I laughed that because he never got upset. He understood where I was. But um, yeah, that was, that was my, my baptism. But, but when I became baptized, um, uh, the day that I gave my life to the Lord, the week was the hardest week. They always say it is, but I know it was hard for me. Because I had a, uh, I don't know, do you know what Hindus are? And do you know what Muslims and Christians? So I used to work night shift. 
and we had lunch and we were all standing and talking about God. Who is God? And I think I shared this testimony on one of our videos too. And I must remember this because this sets my whole life on a new course, on a course to know God. And um, I, was, I was looking at them and listening to what they were saying. And I was so despondent because they spoke with all their heart. They shared their testimonies like we are sharing our testimonies. And the one was saying his God is better than the other. There were two types of God in the Hindu, Hindu beliefs. And I went out there, my friends, I went out there scared, you know, like, I wouldn't say scared, uh, unsure of what I'm believing. But I used to study my lessons. So at night I would go and study my lessons. So I went to the car and I cried because I felt so left alone. Like, how do I answer this? How do I know I know the truth? They are believing, they are not. I have my father's beliefs. I have a little lesson studies that I've done as kids and Sabbath school. And I've got the stories in my head. But what do I trust? Who do I believe in? Who do I believe in? And, 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 and I was looking for that verse earlier because you shared that verse and I thought about that verse and it hit me. Um, Taste and see that the Lord is good and he's your refuge. You know, I said there and I thought, what are you saying? Are you saying, God, I can actually, what you tell me, I can put it to test. And if I like it, mm -hmm. I will accept it. And he said, yes, put me to the test. Don't just do what I'm telling you. Put me to the test. And I've lived my life. Now, when you are baptized, you know the love of God. They say it's the first love. It sits right deep in here. You know, you just want to love him. You don't want to do your best. And I started doing things for the right reason. For if it's good for me, I'll do it. You know, and I, and I used to put it in the scientific, what's the name, my life. I chose to, to, to change my lifestyle. I chose a lot of stuff. And it was good, like Anthony said. It was good. But then you find yourself caught into a, a cycle. I found myself caught into a cycle where you just do things because you have to do it. And I went back and lose some of that first love. I used to just do things because the Bible says so. And I trust the Bible. But I didn't read deeper into being, it's more than just doing what God is saying but actually uh, uh, understanding why is he saying it, right? And I lost it first. That verse I've lost in my mind. I've lost it somewhere along my Christian journey. So when I say, when I have to share testimony about God, I, I can't tell people, oh, I, I, I love God because he's given me a house. I've got a job. I've got a good wife. You know, when you give testimony, you just speak about all the good things that God has done. And I'm not taking that away from God because I know I wouldn't have that with God. Mm -hmm. But, but that is not my test. That is not what I think a testimony is really about. Because there's people that probably because of circumstances they don't have what I have. Mm -hmm. And I'm telling them that I'm getting so God isn't giving it to them. And I don't think so. I don't think so. So I I, I feel I can never share my testimony. So I love God not because what the he has done in my life for me. You know, what, what he does, like almost he's doing me a favor, giving me this, giving me this. That's why I love him, you know. But I love him because I learned to know him. Mm. Mm. I learned to know the person of God, the character of God. And this was a journey. I didn't know that. And it was only 16 years, 15 years. It's probably when I just met you, Anthony, when I started looking into the character of God, who God really is. So I love God, not because my, my church tells me, my parents tell me, the Bible tells me. I love him because of who he is. Amen. And only by reading and only by making him part of my experience in life and only observing things in life, it just brought me closer to him. And, and, and God's love is, is very special. Paul speaks about it in Ephesians. And, and this is why I say, um, uh, that when I say I started to, 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 to learn this, is this verse is so important in my life. John 15 verse 15. I do not call you servants any longer because servants do not know what their master is doing. Instead, I call you friends because I have told you everything I have heard from my father. And this is it. God I was a servant before. I was just doing what God was telling me to do. Mm, 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 mm. I never understood it. 
And only when I started understanding this revelation, I became God's friend. And I'm, I'm blessed by it. I, I'm really blessed by it. But God's love, Ephesians 3, verse 17, 18. Paul speaks about, I love this chapter, chapter 3. And I pray that Christ will make his home in your hearts through faith. I pray that he may have your roots and your foundation in love so that you, together with all God's people, may have the power to understand how broad, how long, and how deep and how wide God's Christ love is for us. Mm -hmm. And I've experienced that. It's now 12 years, and I can now share that love with my family. And like you say, Anthony, I did not know what God's love is, and I couldn't share it with my family. My children even said I've changed because Amen. of who he is. And, and like you say, there is something special when you learn to know God. All of us are going to share this message of knowing God is so, so much important. So, my brothers, I, I, I came to a point where I realized that God is not a policeman, <laughs> which I always thought he was. God <laughs> is not like a judge, you know, like the judges of this world condemning us, saying, you're right, and I came to their understanding. God is not a prison guard. He's not going to hold me in prison. But mm. God is my father. Mm. He's mm. the Lord of my life. He's my savior. And he's my friend. Amen. Very nice. That's what I wanted to share. With you today. Wow. And how do you feel now, Iva? Do you feel you become more closer to, to God than on the beginning of your life before? Oh, oh yes. Oh, yes. It seems like something gets released from you. You know, you, you feel so much freer. Um, mm. It's funny when even when you become a Christian, there's still this load under you. Even after you just got baptized, there's this load. There's not that freedom yet, that, that free that you really feel free. But mm. now I do. Now I do feel free. Um, and like Anthony also explained, that freedom counts so much in people's lives. And I love God for who he is. Not the, the truth will set you free, isn't it? Yes. You and know who the doesn't truth. Wanna, now, now, if you have such a person as God, who doesn't want to hang out with him? I, I'm mm. speaking like young people speak. You know? Who doesn't want to hang out? <laughs> who doesn't want to spend time with him? It is why we spend hours talking about him, because of who he is. Mm. Yeah. And who will not trust a person like that? I don't know. So hyper can I, I just ask one more question? Yeah. You you say that um, um, you you had this moment where you realized that God was saying, um, "Why don't you test me first, and then you can trust in me after?" So what kind of tests did you do? Can you uh, explain a bit more? If someone wanted, not, not, to oh. I don't think he said test is in T E S T. I think it was taste, taste yeah. of me. Yeah, yeah, but but if, but I needed to test. I understand both your points. Yes, yeah, um, sure no. And um, I, I, uh, there was my lifestyle wasn't good, so I got baptized. There was things that I did that was unhealthy for me, you know, thoughts that I had that was unhealthy for me, and I didn't at that time think those thoughts would 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 be God wouldn't mind. Mm. But I put it to the test. I, I brought it in my life. I discussed it with my wife, what I want to do in my life. And we together decided to live by those standards. And, and, and my wife still says, if, if God was never in our relationship, we probably would have separated. Mm. Because there was difficult situations that we had to deal with it in a certain way over time. But now I'm dealing with it so much better. I'm dealing, like you say, so much better. So much better. Are you at peace? I'm at peace. Mm. I'm really at peace. And, and I, 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 the biggest thing I want other people to share of this peace. I, and I think all of us want that, you know. Yeah. Mm. Mm. Who's yeah. next? Yeah, that's great. That's a, that's a, that's an awesome um, emotional um, a little short testimony there, Hyper. And um, uh, Hyper, um, Hyper and I used to go to the same church. And uh, whenever we used to give up and do like a moment to share in our, in our church, 
Hyper Eye and another brother named Scotty. Everyone used to always have to bring the uh, the napkins or the handkerchiefs to us because they know when we get up to share, it's always going to be a, a tear shed. Yes, and it's yes, just, know it, it, you know, brother, and it's just <laughs> and it's just how we how we feel in the Lord and how emotional we are and how God has changed us in our life. So thank you for for sharing that and being being willing to be transparent, Hyper, to show uh, who you are and, and where you are with uh, with your father. Mm -hmm. Yeah, whoever wants to go next. Yeah, I'll go. Um, I just wanted to add hyper that. Um, yeah, what you said is is very was very mature, and one of the things that touched me, what you say, is that um, you love the Lord not because of what He has given you or what He gives to you, but you love the Lord because of what He is. And I think you know that's that's a higher level, my brother. Because, for example, for me, um, I'm pretty happy with my life, and I and I thank the Lord every single day, every single moment, you know. But I don't know how I would feel if all came to shattered pieces. You know, will I have the same faith in the fact that you love the Lord because of what He is? Is independent of loving the Lord for what he gives to you. Even though most of us, because we tend to um, go into a more healthier uh, life, you know, good things come to us. You know, that's how reality works. Mm -hmm. um, it's not a life insurance, but you know. Um, so yeah, thank you for that. Mm -hmm. it's, it's one level that I want to get. So, um, my my journey is a very very slow one it's like it's not even a marathon it's like a marathon multiplied by a hundred <laughs> or something like that uh, i was born in chile and my my house didn't have religion my mom was an atheist i didn't know she was an atheist because she taught me to pray and she was an atheist but she thought it was good for me <laughs> um she she grew up in 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 a catholic school so she tried to she said oh it's good it's good for the kid but she didn't believe in god and um, my father neither uh, believed it. so and just by chance uh, i went to the primary school that it was just a block away from my home and the primary school was a seven-day adventist school so i stayed for the whole primary years in the seventh day at Adventist in the Adventist school. And you know, they taught us religion and they taught us verses. And I had cousins who were going to that uh, school as well and they were Adventists. So I always had that knowledge of Adventism and God and 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 I believed it, you know, as a kid, you know how kids are, they believe in, in things that they taught and we take it for granted. And, and I did, but you know, you grow up and things change, particularly when you become a teenager. So um, my mother then moved to um, Brazil and uh, I was a teenager and I wasn't into uh, any sort of religion anymore. I did believe in God, but I, you know, it was not existent. And I, a few years later, uh, I remember for some reason, I don't know why, but I, it's like something was missing. And I remember one night I prayed to God and I said, please, 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 if you really exist, show, show, show me where do I go? You know, what is the, what is the way uh, to get to know you? And just soon after that, a cousin of mine, she said, um, hey, Rod, uh, I, I, I've been converted. And she gave me a book um, called uh, The Great Conflict. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, and I read it. And to me, it was like easy reading because I had that basic that I learned in the, in the Adventist school. Um, and I loved it. You know, I said, this is the truth. And really weird things happened when I was reading the book. For example, I was in my lounge reading the book. TV was off. 
Um, also, at that time, we didn't have remote control on the TVs. You had to walk to the TV and turn it on and, <laughs> and off. And believe it to me, it happened a few times that I would be reading the book like, yeah, wow, type of thing. And the TV would turn on. And I go, well, that's weird. I would go to the TV and the button was off, but the TV was working. Um, after a while, I thought maybe it's the devil, you know, trying to distract me. I don't care. I didn't care at the time. And I just kept on reading. And I think it was too much information to me at that time because I took it like all in it. And I had like a million questions and I was having nightmares in the sense that I wanted to learn and I understand everything and it was just too much and there was nobody to follow or direct me or anything and it was it became uh, a stage that I said oh, I have to I have to put this away otherwise I'm gonna go crazy and I did for another few years I just put that away because it was just too much and I moved to Australia came to work in a place and uh, I, there was a, a, a lady that worked in, in my department that kept inviting me to go to her church because she spoke Portuguese. And I, you know, in Brazil, they speak Portuguese. So she found out that I spoke the same language. And she said, oh, come to our church. It's a Portuguese church. I said, well, what religion are you? And she goes, oh, it's a Seventh-day Adventist church. And I go, oh, my Lord. They're like flies. They keep following me. <laughs> <laughs> It doesn't matter where I go. I meet a seven-day Adventist. What? Anyway, got uh, a long story short. I, I, I went there and I stayed there for a few years, but it was similar to what Hypa uh, said. You, you get indoctrinated into this religion and this package of what you should believe, what you shouldn't believe and all that. Um, and I was comfortable, but I always had questions at the back of my mind as to um, some of the stuff that just didn't make much sense, maybe. And, and that's the view that you have of God, that even though I think, I still think that among all the um, Protestant churches, probably the, the Seventh-day Adventist church is the one that has the message that is less uh, how could I say, less, not controversial, but less, they show a, a, a God that is more loving, at least they don't believe in, in, um, in hell, you know, that people go to hell and they will suffer for eternity, uh, they believe that, you know, hell was eternal death, and I was comfortable with that, but I still had the thought that God was, at the end, God was going to kill them all, because they had no choice. <clears throat> so I still felt a little bit uncomfortable. And my mother, funny that she also was baptized and she became to, you know, be a seven day Adventist and believe in God and all that. And, but she still, when, when I said to my mom, oh, you know, this is a message and at the end, this will happen. She go, oh no, God is not going to kill anyone. And I go, but, but that, that, that's what the Bible says, you know? And she goes, no, 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 no. Don't, don't believe that, but it, this, this is a, how they teach us. And she would never believe this. She would think that God was so good and so loving that he would not possibly um, kill anyone. Mm. And now <laughs> I understand that even though she doesn't study much, she knew more than I did. <laughs> uh, <laughs> she's actually in the room upstairs. Um, you better and, be quiet. <laughs> and uh, I think common reason came to the, the, the ministry, common reason that you might be familiar with came to put things a, a clearer for me, you know? And every day I get to know more about the character of God and it had nothing to do with this character that I was taught. And I wasn't really comfortable, but I didn't have another choice at the time, but to believe in that character because there was, to me, there was no other choice. I mean, that, that was the best that they had, but there was a better one, you know, but, and, and, and I think 
this is a really good message that we have to spread because at the time when I was in, in church, I didn't think, you know, this message is, yeah, it's good, but I don't feel like passionate about it because there's still stuff that it doesn't make a lot of sense, but now it does. And you know, you know what? God is love and, and, and that's it. He, he is love. There is no, you can't um, mix a God that it would be revengeful ki um, killing or, or do anything bad to people because they're their creation. And um, so the vision, not the vision, the understanding that I have now of the character of God is completely different. And as Hypa said, it frees you, you know, it's like taking a weight out of your head and shoulders. It's just, it just, everything makes sense. And it's just freedom really freedom you can see it makes so much sense you know um so this is the love this is the god that i love now and i think it trans the the best picture i have is uh from uh david on psalm 19 where he talks about um god uh God's law and how precious it is, how beautiful it is. And, you know, the thoughts of our minds and what we speak should be pleasing to him. Um, so, yeah, I'm still in the journey, you know, hey. but now I can truly, truly say that I'm free now and not Amen. in bondage anymore. Amen. Thank you, my Thank brother. You. I think we all on the journey. Yeah. Yeah. I just, I just share very quick because the time is going faster now. I can see. Yeah. And uh, my testimony. Uh, what time I start now? Fifty-four. Yeah. My my testimony. All all the people in my testimony, almost all of them, is still alive today. And uh, I was brought up in uh, Catholic. And uh, my dad will telling me I have and my sister have to go to church. If we're not going to church, we will have trouble. We have to go to church every Sunday. And um, I go to church with my sister. And uh, in the church, we are the one who sing more aloud than everybody. They recognize when we're there because we love God so much. And if I on Sunday, if I'm going to fishing on myself, I'm always talk to God if, because there is nobody on the ocean. I will take to God, I will say to God, I want to talk to you. I, I want you to talk to me. You know, I love you. You know, I love you. And uh, I said to my mom one day, I want to have a Bible to read. He said, no, Bible is no good to read. If you read the Bible, you, you, you will become like a crazy man. Look at our next door neighbor. Each time when he drink, he smoke marijuana. He said, "Lama lama sabaktani," and he swear. He said, "I don't want you to become like this." And but anyway, I want to have a Bible, but I don't know how it look like. But try to make a story very short. And um, one day, I've been married, and uh, we have two children. And then uh, I met a Muslim guy. And this Muslim guy uh, become uh, a Pentecost church, went to a Pentecost church. And when I make a little garden and he always pass and talk to me, try to convince me to become a Pentecost. And um, finally I joined them and I want to have a Bible. That is my focus, to have a Bible. He gave me a small Bible, uh, only New Testament, but there is a uh, different color, like not black uh, uh, cover, but it's a uh, lot of um, color and little people on that as well. But I said, uh, I want a Bible like a black color. I know I learned that it's a black color and it's very thick. That's what I want. He said, that is the old and the new Testament. I said, oh, what do you mean by that? He said, because there is two Testament in this book. I said, what, what is this, this small one? He said, only new Testament. I said, I want, all, I want all of them. <laughs> and he talked to his pastor, I got one Bible. He went to church and then 
And then um, I continued to follow the church. It's about six months I've been into this church. But before these six months, and I um, each time they give the shapa, and I smell this uh, wine, alcohol, because I not drink, I'm not a smoke, that bother me so much. And I talked to God and I said, if that your church uh, to drink alcohol, if that is not your church, just take me out of it But uh, until six months. But one day I remember I met, uh, I talked to God and I said, I want to bring someone to my place who is in your church. I don't know what church is yours, but I want to go straight away in your church. But you have, the, you have to, do, to do this work for me. And finally, after two, or two weeks, something like that, someone came, to, uh, someone came to my place, and a young uh, Indian lady. And when she came to my place, she, um, she supposed to come to teach my wife the Bible. And I asked the same question I asked the Pentecost church pastor and others but no one be able to un answer me. But I didn't know if I have seven questions, but uh, this lady after we talking and then she said, I have seven questions, but she opened the Bible one after one question and give, and give the answer from the Bible. I just jump, I said, the <laughs> Bible answer me, wow. And, and I like it and I want to do the same thing with other people. Now, one day he, 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 she, she, she can see, I don't want to make any move. Because now I'm scared, I don't want to change religion or religion. And now she sent, it, she sent her pastor. Her pastor came to my place and, and, and want to talk to me and she, and he started to give me Bible study. And one day it was on one Friday, he said to me, James, tomorrow in our church will be a big like a party and, um, and maybe you never see things like that happen. And if you want to come uh, to our church, I, I invite you, I give you a, a great inv invitation. I said, um, okay. And then he said, uh, I said, okay, I will come, just give me the address. He said, no, 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 I will be your driver. Leave your car home. I come pick you up and I will dr drop you back home. And then I said, okay, he come in the morning. But before he came at, uh, on Friday, I have a friend called Zulbia Gallia. Maybe if one day he saw this video, he will know what I'm talking about. And, um, and I have a dream about him. And uh, in, this, in my dream at night, he said to me, James, he said, you always said to me, you want to go to this restaurant. And I said, I, I don't remember. He said, no, 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 come, I will take you to this restaurant. He take me in his car and he go in a place where I never see before. And then I saw, uh, like a big church, a big wooden door, vinyl one, and just wide open. And then I said, it looked like a church. He said to me, come in into this restaurant. And when I get in, I saw over there, there is a lot of little grass, uh, wine grass, and then you have uh, also bread. I said, what kind of a restaurant is that? You already put your, your drink in it? And I don't understand. But finally, my break, uh, my 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 um, my dream is gone, and in the morning, my pastor come and and take me there to the church, and when I go when I got over there, I said I knew this place, and I said, ah, oh, um, what what is, what is this place? You know, because uh, I never been here, but it, it's it's familiar to me. It's something I've been here just recently, and when I get in. And then I saw, I, I look in front and I saw the grass exactly what I'm dreaming of and the bread over there too. And now in my dream, in my dream, these two men just come with a plate, with a plate and to serve each one. And when he come to me, when I pull my hand, he said, no, you're not ready. And I said, wow, that is embarrassed, you know? <laughs> and then he passed to everybody. And uh, after that, um, after that happened, and then I said to myself, I said, um, I said, uh, why, why I'm not allowed to, to, to drink it? But, but I come to the restaurant to drink. But anyway, my dream is broken. And then a uh, day after, my pastor take me there and I saw two men coming. And when they put the, the plate to me and I said, no, 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 thank you. And then said, oh, you're not baptized yet. I said, ah, oh, you have to be baptized before you drink that. In Mauritius, in my country, you have to be baptized before you take, uh, because the Bible said, you have to know what you're doing. 
right? And anyway, and after that, uh, that is a dream, the first time I'm going to church. And uh, the dream before I've been baptized, I just watched my time. The dream before I've been baptized, I dream there is one angel coming and we was at, um, at, um, at an oval with my mother-in-law, my, my wife and my two daughters. And the, the angel said, James, he said, um, Father, Heavenly Father, I call you and he need to, to talk to you. I said, yes, yes. But I said, what about my family? He said, don't, don't worry about them. He will look after them. And my mother-in-law said to me, just go, James, and tell them to re tell the father to remember us. I said, yes, I will. But we have, there is a, a grass ladder. Uh, when you know, when you walk on the glass, and uh, especially uh, at night, uh, when the, the, the afternoon, the evening, it start to get uh, darker, and then it start to slippery, it's getting cold. And when I walk there with the angel, he said, don't look back because you might fall. And when I get there, and then I saw, I saw a large table, grass table, two angels, one in, in, in the front where you finish the step, and the other one is still down with a ball of ink and a big of feather in it to write in a large book to give you, to give you um, your name. And then when I, um, when I uh, tell them about five steps to finish, I'm still nailed down. Uh, because I walk on my knee and my hand because it's too slippery. And when I get there, he said to me, he said, he said, um, he said James, he said, hurry up and give your name. As I was, the book will be closed. And then I said, I, I tell my name. And then he said, no, 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 you have to finish the step. When I finish the step, I gave my name and still down there and it's written my name. And I've been baptized the day after. And then after a few months, when I read the Bible, he said, uh, when you accept God, your name is written in the book of life, which I, I, I'm very happy with that. But anyway, to be uh, very quick, uh, I become seven days Adventist, more trouble happened to me. I lost my job and now I have, uh, because I'm not working on the Sabbath day. And then um, I wish I can explain everything in my, in my, in my testimony, but is that the reason I'm here in Australia today because of my Sabbath day? Because, um, no, I still have a few, few minutes, is it? Yeah. yeah, because I start 54, isn't it? No, what I'm talking about. You've been going for 10 minutes, 15 seconds. Oh, I, I stop here. Yeah, I stop here. I wish I can, uh, maybe at other times I will tell you everything about my testimony. Yes, go ahead, my brother. It looks, it looks like you had a nice walk with God since you were young, James, very young. Yes, because uh, I, I always love God. That I don't know. I'm always love God. That that that, that God knows anyway. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Well, we've had some some really good testimonies. I don't know exactly where I'll fit in, but um, I will try to keep the standard up there. <laughs> uh, really good, and uh, I'm sure many of you, like James has said he wish you could share more. So maybe another time we can hear another part of your, your testimony in Amen. your life and how you come to where you are in your walk with Jesus. But for me, I just would say at a young age, um, yeah, my parents, um, uh, my parents, uh, when they got married, after they had me, um, we, we, we didn't really have much religion in the home that I knew about. My my um my great uncle was um, a JW, so we used to go to the Kingdom Hall, and uh, we used to go to the big, I don't know what they call it. They used to have a big meeting, and used to be at stadiums like football stadiums, and be like packed out. So we, you know we went to a few of those, but that's when I'm really young. I don't really understand much about it, and just going because my parents are going like many of you guys were doing before, and um, and then as we got older. I uh, started going to a, I think, uh, a church with my, with my uh, grandparents, because um, uh, when my parents divorced, my mom moved back with my grandfather for a short time, and but we still used to go with uh, him uh, to church and things like that. And then after a while, from mid teenage to, uh, for um, uh, just before I returned a teenager. Um, uh, we probably stopped going uh, to church because I was more so living with my dad. 
But um, uh, then this, but a curiosity was always growing in me about God and about who God is and obviously about Jesus. In the U.S., a big pastime is Easter. We used to have these big old Easter egg hunts and things like that. So we, you know, we always talked about that. And then we talked about the crucifixion. So you kind of want to know things. But um, between then and when I graduated college, not a whole lot of church and not, not a lot of Christian living from myself. Um, as I said, I did go with my dad and stuff. And, um, but then uh, somehow I, I, I finished college and I ended up on the shores of Australia um, playing basketball. But um, for some reason, my life wasn't what I thought it would be, even though I was in another country in a, in, in a beautiful country at that and uh, really nice people and stuff, but I just didn't seem to be really happy uh, about life and, and even about myself. So I took a, a turn like, like Rod did and I just said, God, um, show yourself to me. If, if you were real, I just, I wanna know, I don't wanna believe because of my grandfather, my father, or, or even my mom for that matter. I wanna know who you are myself. And I'm not kidding. It have to be a couple of days I'll just say a week because I can't remember the time frame, but I met James. I met James and um, we started to talk about the Bible and about Christ. And um, it, it was incredible. Uh, it was incredible. And, um, and then I moved to the States for a little while and we stayed in touch. And I came back to Australia and we got back in touch again. And he came and started doing Bible studies again. And uh, my wife, I had already been baptized into in, into the church and then um my wife wanted to start getting some bible studies with james too and then she wanted to get baptized so i said oh yeah i'll get baptized with you so we all got baptized together and uh that was uh, direct uh because of our relationship with james but also you know the holy spirit was revealing that truth to us and it, it's just funny i'm gonna i'm gonna move ahead really quickly because me and james have a a long a long history together over <laughs> over like 25 years, probably 20, maybe 26 years, whatever it is. But um, then I, uh, I moved to, I'll cut some stuff out, but I moved to Brisbane. And within a year of moving to Brisbane, I meet Hyper. And um, me and Hyper uh, become friends. And I hadn't talked to James for a few months, maybe even six months at that time, um, just due with the busyness of life. I met Hyper and then me and Hyper just started talking about the Lord too. And I'm just thinking like, man, so from James, I learned a lot. And then even from Hyper, I started to learn uh, about Jesus Christ and, and who he was and not following any denomination or any, any pastor, but following the Bible, which is trying to learn more about Jesus and, and who Jesus was and, and his character as he revealed the father to us. And it became pretty clear to me uh, uh, who God was and his loving character through the things that we were doing. And then I got back like maybe six, six months or whatever later back with James and we were all talking and I was telling him about Hyper. And then we were in New South Wales because my, my wife was graduating from with her master's degree. And we all went Hyper and his wife went with us. And, and we then Hyper met James and then all of us, me, Hyper and James were all together and we all talking and sharing the Bible and everything. And the reason why I'm skipping a lot of details in there is because I just want to get to where we are today. And because um, there's a lot of details in there. I had so many highs, so many lows, so many challenges, so many issues, but I'm going to save that for the longer testimony. And uh, so me and Hyper and James are all together and we're all talking and stuff. And um, one day I was on the phone talking to James and I was like, me, you and Hyper have to do a ministry together. And James said, okay, like that. I said, well, I have to call Hyper and I have to, to see what he feels and stuff. So geographically located hyper lives about two minutes from me <laughs> lives like literally around the corner so we all met me him and his wife and my wife met around the corner at one of the parks in the community and we were talking and stuff and i was like yeah bro that sounds like an awesome idea so we all got together and therefore it brought us to where we are now with let's talk about god in this whole platform that we have and i guess one of the things that i i wanted to share was that Things that impressed me about God was it says that God loved us and died for us yet while we were still sinners from Romans 5 and verse 8. That's really powerful for me 
in my journey for someone to see me when I'm, I'm living not the right way and not doing the right things and probably living very selfishly to still be willing to love me and die for me is pretty powerful in my life. And also I believe that the journey of Christianity is a journey, I think like um, um, Rod said, which is very slow. It's not, it's not a, a, a fast race. It's a very slow race and it's, it's, it's over time. And that's why I believe in um, where, um, um, I wrote some stuff down here. I believe where that, um, what did I want to say here? It's up here where we, oh yeah, where, where Jesus was talking to his disciples and he said, I have many things I want to tell you, but you're not ready for it. And that's in John 16 and verse 12. And then also he was talking to, to Nicodemus in John 3 when he says, man, how, you want me to tell you about the heavenly things, but you're not even understanding about the earthly stuff. How can I tell you about the heavenly stuff? So there's, 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 there's definitely a journey that you have to take and undertake. And it's not something like we live in this world where people want things instantly. It's not an instant, you know, order, order of a, a spiritual relationship with the Lord. It's, it's, it's a journey. And you spend that time to where you can develop that love and that trust for someone who probably previously was a stranger. But that time you spend, you become like Hyper said, we're no longer are strangers anymore. Or what he said, as servants, we're friends now. And we can talk face to face. That's an incredible journey. And anyone who wants to shortcut that is not valuing what it really means to have a relationship mm -hmm. with God. Um, the other thing that God talked about in that as well, too, in 1 Corinthians 3, like in verse 1 through 3, it talks about that your own breast milk, you know, at first, when you become baptized or whatever, or get to know God, you're on the breast milk. And if you continue in that journey and you develop and mature, you then get to meet. And then you start to learn more about it. You get to the heavy, the nuts and the bolts, as you say, and do the heavy lifting as you get there. And then I like uh, 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 5 through 8, where it says we have to add to our spiritual journey, our walk. We have to add godliness. We have to add faith. And, and um, we have to add... Um, um, endurance and 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 uh, and uh, what they call it, uh, temperance and things like that. So it's 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 a journey, and we're never gonna be able to to have all those at one time. I I think probably in the world that we live in, but the 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 challenge is to continue on that on that path to develop those character traits, and then obviously we find in um, in uh, Galatians chapter five the fruits of the spirit. And, and, and that's how we want to live. And, and that's how we want to, to love each, not only God, but love each other in that way. And I, and I think that it, it's just an incredible journey. And I think that what Christians have to understand, and I think this is very important, is that each one of us in our Christian journey may not be at the same point of understanding about who God is. And I think that we need to really keep that in mind because there are Christians that get fed up or get impatient or they get divisive and, and angry and things like that because the person may not understand or may not believe what you believe, but it doesn't mean that they're not on the, they're not on the path. They're not on the journey. They're not running the race. You know what I mean? They're not fighting a good fight. It doesn't mean that. It just means that they're going to keep traveling in their journey and they're going to go from that breast milk to meat. And you, meaning whatever individual you are, you're not going to be the one who determines that. The one who determines that is that individual in God. And I believe that we all have to respect that. And I, honestly, in my relationships that I've had, and there's been a lot, but I'm just going to obviously reference the two that are on the screen with me today with Hyper and James. They both have been really patient and really understanding in my journey and in, in my growth. And they neither once have they rammed anything down my throat or have they beat me over the head with the Bible. And, and I think that is, is very important in, in our journey and our understanding of who God is. And the last thing I wanna say is that sometimes um, our vision or our understanding of who God is affects the person that we are. And, and I believe that we need to read our Bibles and reread our Bibles to get that vision and get that knowledge and an understanding of who God is correct 
as led by the Holy Spirit and not by, as many of you have referenced, other people in your lives, which have been great strengths for you guys, and so have I. But it's not according to them. It's according to how the Spirit reveals it to you. They may be a uh, part of the journey and they may plant seeds, mm. but God is the one who harvests them and brings them to fruition. And I think that that's very important to, to keep in mind as we continue in this journey. And for the sake of time, I think that I'll, I'll kind of end it on that. But, and then I want to say, honestly, as being part of this platform, I've grown a lot by listening to yourself, Anthony, yourself, Rod, and even uh, Louie, and uh, I'll say Kim, and Daniel, and Cindy, and uh, some of the others, uh, Dwayne, and um, I can't remember your other nephew, Liso's brother. Uh, Brandon. Yeah, and Brendan. I, I, have truly, I have truly grown by listening and hearing you uh, to give your, your testimony and explain and share what certain scriptures mean to you. And I'll just say that I, I really value this platform and what it what it represents um, as a as a way to share. Very good. Like, like where where God is is um is bringing you in your journey, and I just want to encourage you never to to stop. Because God will never forsake you. So don't stop in your journey. And the more you get to know who God is, the more that you can reveal. And I think you were the one who said it, Hyper. If you don't know the love of God, how can you share it? You, I, I think it's impossible. I think that you can't. You can give a, a, a fictitious front of uh, understanding and a knowledge of God, but I think you will be found out to be a fraud in the end. So mm -hmm. as Rod, you said it, we have to taste for our own. Mm -hmm. And then we will know how good God is. Mm -hmm. Amen. 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 Thank you very much. I, I have a question for the, uh, the three last guys who spoke here. Um, I, know, I know the time is gone, but... No, no, um, it's okay. Yeah, but I think, I think maybe if you guys could just... Uh, help us with this question that like um how would you in in a brief statement like ooh, as comprehensive as you can but very brief um how would you describe um the character of god i think and then um and then maybe what if someone uh, who watches this video wants to start following god and wants to try this out where would you advise them to, what would you advise them to do? So I don't know if all of you have to answer both questions, but I'll I'm gonna, I'm gonna go, I'll go first and I'll be very quick and I'll be very brief. It's only four letters to describe God. And I, I mean it with all my heart. L-O-V-E is the first one. And the second one is where to start. Honestly, you can start anywhere in the Bible, but maybe if you look at the life of Jesus Christ, mm. there's no greater example of who God is that was revealed to us than through Jesus Christ. And that's what I'll say. I think when we're talking about, about God love, I seem like you just said, um, uh, Anthony, about God exercise his kindness, right? And uh, many Christians still misunderstand the point about God. They thought, uh, they, th they thought, uh, actually the Bible said that as well, God have been done so many killing, right? But uh, the, I give free verse to check and uh, they can go through this verse and then they can write us, uh, uh, what do you call this? Uh, email. Us with an email and let us know if they agree with what we just uh, share with them. Uh, I give free verse uh, to, to a study. And the first one is uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 26. Uh, the Bible said uh, in this one, Paul said, the last enemy to be defeated will be death. Death is the enemy of God. He can't keep, keep, uh, kill people. The second one is Hebrew chapter two, verse 14. 
and uh, you can re read that because the time is limited. And then also First John chapter one verse five, and is very very clear. He said God is light, and another word for light is truth. And then he said, and there is no darkness at all in him. Darkness mm. represents sin, represents a death, and but evil. that is not in God at all. Mm. What I say, what I say to people that they don't have kids and not to get into a religious conversation. I, I ask them, do you want to know what love is? You have kids, <laughs> have kids <laughs> and you'll know what love is. And I think God, we are God's children. And it doesn't matter what my kids will turn up. You know, you give them the best education, the best things that you can possibly think of. But you don't, it's their choice, you know. They grow up and what they're going to turn up, uh, I hope is good for what I've been teaching them. Um, but if by any chance one of my kids, they go on the wrong path, it does not matter what they will become or what they will do. I will always love them. Amen. And I will fight to get them Amen. back. Amen. Mm. Amen. Wow. Amen. That's powerful. Wow. Hey. Hey, listen, maybe if no one else says anything, maybe we can end on that. And then if you guys want to hang back for more of a discussion on that, we can all hang back for a little bit. Does that sound all right? Oh, yeah. Does anyone, does anyone want to close in prayer like maybe Hyper or James or someone? And pray? Yeah. Okay. Let's pray. Holy God, thank you for uh, the different journeys that we've all been led by you. Amen. We thank you for your amazing character, which has brought us peace. Mm. And we thank you for your love and the freedom that you give us and the changes you make in our life. Mm. We absolutely appreciate it. And um, we wish that other people may come to know the peace that comes from uh, having this relationship with you. Mm. And we um, take advantage of every opportunity to help other people to know you. And we pray that you, um, when you send people our way, may we be ready, God. May your love flow through us. Mm -hmm. So, um, yes, yeah, so thank you so much for the conversation. And we pray for anyone who may be watching and wanting to learn how to follow you, how to talk to you, what to do. Uh, there's so many things, God, uh, that maybe they may not learn from our video. Mm -hmm. We pray for the angels to be around them, to help them, pray for the Holy Spirit to just move things around so that more and more people may come to know you. Mm. Yeah. Appreciate uh, the conversation as well, God. It's encouraging to see what other people have been through mm. and how much they're willing to go through for you. So thank you so much for that. In the name of Jesus, amen. 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 amen.